So we're going to be trimming today and what we're looking for is to have some clay, a bucket of water, a large sponge to clean your fingers or your tools off with. You'll need a couple of ribs, different sizes. You're going to want a needle tool near you or a scoring tool. Either one is fine. You'll want an X-Acto knife if you chose to do the one where we're going to carve away. Um, and you want this X-Acto knife to be somewhat sharp on its edge. It makes for cleaner lines. You'll also need a small sponge near you, a chamois cloth as well, and in addition, a large loop tool. If you prefer a small loop tool, that's fine. We're going to trim off some of the side. We might trim off some of the top, but I probably won't do too much trimming on the top. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to set this upside down and recenter it. If you did make the double rimmed scalloped edge, you want to be careful of the scalloped edge um, and how wet you're trimming that. Because if you damage these scalloped edges, it is harder to repair them and make them look like you did. they did when you threw them. Um, so just make sure you're trimming that clay at that leather hard consistency. All right, so we're going to recenter this pot. So I'm drawing a light line and I'm looking at this line and looking at how even the sides are. So you can see that I've got a larger, fatter area of the circle and a skinnier side. The skinnier side means you have less clay. So you want to move it in the direction of the skinny side of your circle that you drew. And that is how you get that pot recentered on the wheel. You can also tap it to center, which takes a little bit of practice. And when I'm tapping to center, I'm just looking at where it comes close to my side hand and giving it a little tap. You can practice that with a coffee can or a can of sand. Those are good tools to use. Next, I'm going to lock this pot down with some soft clay. So fresh out of your bag is a good consistency to use for worms. Um, remember that if your worms are dry, your pot will fly. So fresh out of the bag is best. You're going to roll a little worm and secure it down to the bat. Try not to push in on the side of your rim and hold that pot down as you're trimming so you don't scoot it right back off center. If this pot had four sides, that were corners, I would be doing northeast, south, and west. So I do four different worms for that pot. All right, so when I hold this tool, I'm going to hold it with my finger right at the neck of the tool so I have the most amount of control. And I'm going to come and start on the side and trim just a little bit of that away with that tool straight up and down. I'll trim just a tiny bit off the top, but I did throw this to where I didn't have to do too much trimming. So I'm holding the tool straight across. 
I'll start at the edge and then I'll very slowly work my way in toward the center. Lastly, I'm kind of refining everything with my soft rib tool. So we're using this just to get those trimming marks out and kind of recompress that clay into itself so that it doesn't look so machined in the end and the glazing will go on the surface a little more smoothly. So we're going to go ahead and recenter these next cupcake tops. And I'm just going to do that by tapping it to center. Remember you're looking for that circle that you draw to be the same width from your line all the way to the edge. And then you know that's centered on your bat. I'm going to begin by trimming the side this side edge here. Be careful of the marks that you've made on your tufts so that you don't trim right into those. I'm holding the tool at a little bit of an angle outward or away from the center of the bat so that I don't mar those puffed out areas too much. I do keep my hands connected when I'm trimming. I've got one hand on the pot and two hands connected to each other. Um, I did, my pot got bumped on the shelf a little bit. That happens in a community studio. No big deal. We'll go ahead and just patch this up. I'll show you. You can just patch it up with a little tiny bit of soft clay. You just kind of want to make little hatch marks there. And you'll take a tiny bit of clay, roll out a little worm, I'll put a tiny bit of water on the surface here so that the worm will stick. I don't usually put water or slip on the worm so that it doesn't fall apart in my hand. And then I'll just kind of work that in with my finger. Patchwork Repair 101. And then you can just take a tiny bit of water on your finger or use the slip that you just used to attach the worm and smooth that down. I'm going to come through and rib the top just like I did the side. I'm not going to trim the top of this because I did throw it thin enough. If I were to trim it, it would probably bow. I don't want that. So we're just going to smooth out the marks from the bat with the rib. I am using a tiny bit of water here, that's okay. Just be careful not to super saturate your work at this stage. It can cause you problems. It also makes it a little bit messier than you probably want to end up with. So a little water goes a long way. And then you can just smooth out the rim from where it was on the bat. Again, I'm using a little bit of water because of the consistency of the clay. Just to smooth those edges out from where I recentered the pot. I'm going to let this set up for a second from where I added all that water before I add that stand into it. 
because if I were to add it now, I've rehydrated it to the point where it might push through with the weight and I don't want that. So we'll let that sort of set to the side for a minute while I trim my other tops. So for this top right here that I cut into a square when it was initially thrown, I'm going to take my tool called a shore form and just shape the edges up a little bit. This form, it can be found at Home Depot, S-U-R is how you spell the tool, shore form, or you can get a fancy schwanky mud tools shore form, basically it's a cheese grater. Um, you're going to take this and you can kind of make any kind of shape or refinement you want. You just go in one direction and then you just knock it out in your bucket or the trash can. So I'm going to go around and kind of shave up these edges here and then refine it with my red rib. So on this top, what I'm doing is gritting out where I want my cuts to be. If you'll remember from the prior videos, we threw one plane with the intention of cutting. So this will kind of look bas like a basket or a cage. I'm drawing a series of rectangles around and kind of setting them off from each other. So. Um, the method of doing this means you can always erase your design if you don't like it before you commit to cutting it, which is a nice thing. You do want to make sure that you don't put one uh, square or rectangle right up to the other one because they will get more and more fragile the more that you cut away from the wall. So just make sure that they're not butted right up against each other as you go around. Um, when you go to refine, that can cause you some problems later. What I'm doing here is I'm coming back in and beveling these edges of my cuts on each shape as I go around. I'm going to do this on the interior and the exterior. It really helps refine the shape and make those cuts not quite so rough. And then after that I will come through when I'm all finished with my sponge and sponge up any excess burrs that might have been left behind. assemble this so you'll need some soft clay for worms, a bucket of water, and your pieces. So the first thing we need to do is recenter the top on the bat. You also need a brush for slip 
I just use water for slip, that's just fine. And a needle tool for scoring. So recentering this upside down, I'm just going to tap it to center. You can draw a line if that's easier for you to do. And then you want to take your soft worms and lock your pot down. Okay, here I'm drawing a line on the interior and also on the exterior of where this attachment is going to be. And then I'm going to just make sure that I slip and score, and you want to make your score marks nice and deep. Think of it like a zipper. So the closer those mar the deeper and closer those marks can get to each other, the better. If you make really light lines, like so, it's going to be more apt to lose its clay handshake in the kiln. So just make sure you make those score marks nice and deep when you're going to attach. Alright, so we're going to attach this with a little bit of water for slip. And after I get this attached and as close to center and the round as possible, I'm going to do a small seam reinforcement where the stem meets the top and that will help it stay together as it dries. Okay. 